Hey people, Fernando doing another video for the more survivalists. I want you guys to watch this from the Monterrey Park shooter. How he was engaged by this guy, this hero really that ended up disarming him. Let's just check this out and then comment on what we see here. So he pulls the gun away from him. He attempts to hit him with the gun. Uh, At one point, I was able to pull the gun away from him shove him aside, create some distance, point the gun at him, intimidate him, shot him and say, get the hell out of here, I'll shoot, get away, go. Yeah, and, and he pushes the man away and the man just just walks, which, you know, you never quite, a 72-year-old man, I think he is. Much courage I had to confront a situation like this. But you know what courage is? Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the ability to have adversity to fear when fear, fearful events happen, such as this. I think that what he's trying to say is that uh, being brave is not the absence of fear, but to act in spite of being afraid. I guess that was, you know, I don't think it was all that clear, but I think that's what he was trying to say. He was scared because there is a longer clip where he says he, he thought he would get killed, he was afraid of getting murdered, but he still acted on that. And that is a key aspect of all of this. No matter how much training you have, no matter how strong you are, no matter how big you are, if you don't act, you may end up getting shot by a weakling, 72-year-old crazy man. Um, but he did act, and that's why this uh, this is interesting to see. Also, well, there's a couple more things that we can see from this longer video in the way in which uh, you know analyzing the events. So, so the man, you know, even sometimes even old people can be quite strong. He doesn't seem to be very big or very athletic. Some older people that have stayed, you know, in shape as they age can be surprisingly strong, especially if they uh, lived a life of doing a lot of manual labor, uh, then even more so the case. You may be surprised by how strong they may end up being in spite of being old. But here you see that you know, the, he tried to get the gun. Now all of this starts, I think it starts in this doorway. So that's a lesson in itself. Um, taking a, a advantage of these corners or, or a corridor or around a wall or um, you know, a doorway, that's where you you have the, the, the possibility of going for that gun. And, and he does that and he sticks to it, he stays. He commits to it and not, you know, hesitate. If you hesitate and you doubt and you move away a little bit, you give him that distance that will be used against you. He's trying to point the gun. Also notice it has like some sound suppressor of some kind. Maybe you know, he probably bought it from a drug dealer, from some guy on the street. That seems to be a, a pretty nasty, you know, uh, gang member type of gun. Um, seems like kind of an Uzi with a big sound suppressor of some kind. He punches him in the face, but he manages to um, fight and, and take... There is where it starts, right? There in that corridor is where he went for the gun and took hold of the gun, or at least his arm, and that's how he stopped uh, from, from getting shot. Now, we don't see what's going on there. Say, Brandon Say is, is the one that, that stopped the, the gunman. Alhambra, second location. This is in the second location. This man already murdered 10 people. But the, this Brandon guy goes for it, commits to it, and sticks to it. There. There is where he's going. That longer barrel gives you an advantage of grabbing it. Keep that in mind for yourself. Handgun smaller, it's not as easy to take away from someone. Long guns do have advantages, but in stuff like this, yeah. You, you can get hold of it a lot better. There's techniques, retention techniques that you can use to keep control of your lung and pulling back, you know, things that you practice, you learn in training. But obviously this man knows none of that. Obviously that kind of weapon he's using says quite a bit about that too. But also the way in which he, you know, keeps on fighting. Uh, some things Brandon could have done here, you know, first of all, the most important thing is all there. The courage, the will to act in spite of being afraid. All of that super important. Now, techniques such as this one from my book Street Survival Skills, using the gun as a weapon, impacting. This one in particular, 
that one that could have worked beautifully well for him just push pull push forward stab with a barrel of the gun with that long suppressor that he has just smash that thing into the guy's face he will not like it that will hurt him will create uh, a lot of, of time for you right learning how to strike with a gun that's one of the chapters also how to hold a gun that you're trying to take away from someone depends on in on the kind of gun that it is depends if it's a, a revolver semi-automatic all of that is the kind of knowledge that can help you in a time like this where you're struggling you know I, he did a fantastic job mostly the will to act will to act and commit to it i've seen some of these videos where people do get end up getting shot they they, they first act then they 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 double guess themselves or they regret and they go, go back you'll get shot in that moment he already saw that you attacked him you compromise his you know uh, 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 smoke screen of, of a of a fantasy that he had of him being powerful behalf because he has a gun and he will pull the trigger on you you will not get any pity or any mercy from a guy that already killed 10 people anyone that is going to these places to shoot people yeah that is that's where you're at so there's no point in trying to reason with these now he you see how he keeps trying to get the gun away from him if he had been stronger physically you know bigger or something he maybe could have been able to take that gun away from him but he does this thing right slam him over the head with the thing dude you know, don't don't let him do this to you. Just hit him with a gun. Shoot him with a gun. Now, when shooting someone at this kind of distance, there's also techniques from that because you could get shot while pushing the gun out, the guy away from you. You could get shot in your own hand. You shoot yourself in your hand as you try to push him away. These things are the kind of thing that you practice of where you go with your hand, where you shoot with your gun. That's why you do these things. And it all goes back to a moment like this, the one that Brandon is involved here right now. Right, he still did a fantastic job, all things considered, you know, and, you know, great for him. That's the moment where you probably want to put a bullet in him. You have a crazy gunman, he may well be armed. This is the moment in which, no question, you got the gun away from him, you put a bullet in him. He may have a knife, he may have another gun. Lots of these shooters do have more than one gun often on them. You don't take you, you, any risks. Someone walked in, in there with, with, a, with a suppressed Uzi. You take the gun away from him. You put him down right now because your life is at risk in that moment. I mean, you, you don't bargain with these things. You later explain whatever you have to explain to whoever is, um, is required, but you first preserve your own life at, in, when facing a, a gunman like this. He points with a finger and he overpowers him in terms of will. There's a, a little punch there, like, oh, I keep, I want to keep shooting people. Oh, wait, okay. We're... You, you're trusting this to happen. He could turn around and shoot you at any moment. Uh, good for him that it worked for him. But my advice would be, if you're finding yourself in this situation, put him down right away. You don't know if he has another weapon and it, me, it, it, will co it could cost you your life. All right? So... All of these things are why we do the things we do in terms of your EDC, right? What is it that I say all the time? Knife, multi-tool, one in one pocket, one in the other. If you have one guy with your hand, you can access the, the blade on the other. And even if it's a multi-tool, this still has a stabby blade. You can still use that thing so as to cause a, a good amount of damage and you can open it single-handed, right? You don't have to be very fancy about it, but one in each pocket, you know, it could be even more important than even having a handgun. Someone is coming at you like that, someone a lot stronger on top of you, and the arm that you're using to keep that guy from shooting at you happens to be the same hand that access your, your concealed carry gun. A knife in the other, on the other side of your body will be more useful than the gun you cannot access. And that, at those distances, you can go to work and do a lot of damage in a person that is right on top of you. Okay? So, little things to keep in mind. But these things keep on happening. A, a couple of these happen in a matter of hours. So, you know what I'm talking about. That's why you're watching this channel. All of these things are why we do these things. Are why I, I do this stuff. You know, I, I explain here. Folks, that's going to be all for now in terms of the economic aspect of preparedness, surviving the economic collapse. Both books available in the links there below. Take care.